Hello and welcome to Intimate Conversations, where we talk about the people and the historical context of the music we present. I'm Suzy Leblanc, I'm EMV's Artistic and Executive Director, and in today's episode, we are, me and my guests, are going to discuss our upcoming production of Handel's Messiah, a co-production between Early Music Vancouver and the Pacific Baroque Orchestra and the Vancouver Chamber Choir. This is happening on December 7th at the K-Meek Arts Centre in North Vancouver, West Vancouver actually, and on December 8th at the Orpheum. Uh, I want to begin just by introducing my three guests today. Uh, so I'll start with Kari, Kari Turunen, who's Artistic Director of the Vancouver Chamber Choir since uh, 2019. Uh, welcome, Kari. Kari is uh, leading one of Canada's premier professional choral ensembles, the Vancouver Chamber Choir. He's from Finland, uh, he's still very active in Finland as an artistic director, an educator, and an administrator, leading many choral ensembles, including early music ensembles. And most recently, he was the artistic director of the Finnish Swedish Song Celebration and the 2023 Tampere Vocal Music Festival, an absolutely wonderful festival that I recommend if you haven't been, that you visit. Um, he holds a doctorate in early music uh, from the University of the Arts in Helsinki. Uh, Alex Weiman is uh, born in Munich. He's the artistic director of the Pacific Baroque Orchestra here in Vancouver, a well-known keyboard virtuoso on harpsichord and organ, um, who's traveled the world uh, leading early music ensembles and he now resides here. And also he teaches at the University of British Columbia. Um, uh, in addition, he also guest conducts uh, different orchestras in North America. Uh, he's been on more than 100 CDs, all rave reviewed, and was a Juno, got a Juno Award for one of these uh, recordings in 2013. My third and last guest is Jonathan Adams. And Jonathan is a Cree Métis baritone originally from Amiskwetsi Weskaikan. Did I say that right? It's also known as Edmonton. And uh, they've appeared many times with Early Music Vancouver. They've sung with many of the great early music ensembles in Europe. Among their many successes, I want to single out that they were featured in the film Messiah Complex with Against the Grain Theatre and the Toronto Symphony Orchestra. Uh, Jonathan, we'll talk about Messiah Complex in a moment, but uh, Jonathan studied at the Royal Conservatory in Amsterdam and with distinguished mentor mentors um, such as Nancy Argenta and Dame Emma Kirkby and Edith Weens. So welcome, Jonathan, welcome, Alex, welcome, Kari. Um, I, uh, difficult to start with one of the most well-known pieces of, you know, all times, Handel's Messiah. Um, but I thought maybe we should just uh, jump right in and talk about um, its subject matter, uh, what it's about, and also maybe uh, touch on the fact that it's not necessarily a Christmas piece, but it has become associated with this time of year. Um, so I'm just wondering who would like to jump in and uh, tell us a little bit about what, what is this piece really about? Alex, why don't you jump in? <laughs> I will. <laughs> um, well, it has a title, right? Messiah. So it seems to be about a a, a character. I'm, I'm uh, uh, trying to put it uh, in ca cautious words with, without any kind of preoccupations. If you do, if you don't know, if you wouldn't know anything about it, right? It seems to be a novel of some sort about a character by the name of Messiah, and. Um, reading through it um, you uh, will see unfolded a, a life story really um, starting before the moment of birth so with the moment of expecting the upcoming uh, birth and then that arrival of new life and uh, that unfolding of life with uh, all the suffering that comes all the labor it's uh, it's heritage, it's a legacy, as it were, and um, death and uh, 
what comes beyond death, some sort of transfiguration. Um, yes, it's connected to Christmas, and yes, it's also uh, uh, somehow located in the Christian context, though um, I don't think the, the, the name Jesus Christ happens so many times in the piece. It does, it, it comes, but it's not, you're, you're not bombarded with it. Um, and um, that's more of a, of a gut feeling. Um, I uh, find that it's uh, uh, Christian or religious or certainly spiritual, but uh, uh, somehow hugging everybody, if that makes sense. It's, it, 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 it's not, uh, certainly not exclusive. It, it doesn't feel exclusive uh, to me in, in, in that way that it's, it's preaching one religion and um, it feels like a message that um, everybody can, can understand and and uh, um also a, a very warm novel you know to 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 come back to the beginning yeah that's that's what it feels feels like to me that, that's a good thing because as we know we come back to it many times in our lives it's nice that it's a warm feeling uh Kari, just is that uh, similar to your feelings do you have anything to add yeah no i think alex is uh onto something there um I always go back to the way that um, Handel himself identified, which was that he's a composer of Italian opera. And this sort of oratorio comes um, partially, I'm sure, sort of as um, external pressure because of the Puritanism. They didn't sort of like the opera thing. They wanted religious subjects, but I'm sure also, also from an inner source so that this is a pretty good way to go about it as well. But he never ceases to be the opera composer. And he himself defined the Messiah as an entertainment in three acts, which is quite wild. So, so the, there's this wonderful balance of, of ultra serious um, subject matter. I mean, you don't want to diminish uh, Handel's religiousness at all because it's probably the world he lived in. It was the natural thing. But at the same time, there's this strong um, will, if you like, to entertain so it, it's it, i think it's a little bit like you know the best tv series sometimes that they're really serious but they're extremely entertaining at the same time and for me this is probably one of the reasons why it's endured time so well that it feels fresh because it that approach is just so vibrant and um i don't know just jumps at you right that just listen to me and, and i'm going to tell you a story and you know, we humans love listening to stories. We do, we do. And and as Alex said, also the fact that it's so open uh, and still can speak to everyone today is is quite remarkable. Uh, Jonathan, of course, uh, I didn't mention that you would be singing uh, the the bass part in this performance. Um, what are your what is your approach uh, to Messiah? What is it to you? Mm, well, I I started singing it in choirs a long time ago, um, and I've I've sort of worked my way into that uh, bass solo role. Um, I love what Alex said about this sort of warmth uh, inherent in the piece, and what Kari said about um, it being almost like that favorite television show, uh, because I think these sort of shenas within the piece are so um, intimate, they're so personal. It almost feels like you're speaking to a friend, whether it's somebody who is out tending to their sheep or someone who maybe has a more of a military role and is sounding their trumpet or, or whatever it may be, mm -hmm. or the, the sort of grief of losing a friend in He Was Despised. I mean, there's, uh, mm -hmm. there's that, that sort of um, piece that uh, Kari mentions of, of the opera in the piece is I think so much, uh, maybe maybe it is Handel, maybe it is his own feeling through the libretto um, coming through. And um, so it's it's definitely stayed a favorite for me since I was a child and uh, yeah, I love to revisit it. Thank you for all your beautiful answers, all three of you. And it, it's true, I mean, it, it has such a human quality in, in what you say, Jonathan, of how 
some of those arias really express a, an individualism in a way and a, and a relationship to someone. Um, we were just, um, I was thinking about the fact that he achieves all that with, in a way, economical means. Uh, it You would think maybe that a subject as large as this one, um, maybe an Italian composer at the time would have said, I need a double choir and I need, uh, you know, bassoons and I need, you know, a bigger uh, orchestration. And, and somehow, the being the opera composer and the great dramatist that he is, he achieves all of that with a string orchestra, two trumpets, a timpani, four soloists, and a choir, um, and not not a huge double choir, but right? just a normal SATB. Um, so, so I think that's um, kind of amazing, and and also going to be very obvious in this performance because we are returning to the more original version of the piece, um, because as we know. It, people have added all sorts of things on it so it feels like we're a little bit like taking a, a painting from that time and and removing all the coats of things that people added over the centuries to make it better uh so so let's let's hear what you guys think about this going back to to messiah's original score really well i i think what you just the the metaphor you, ju you just used taking the <clears throat> the layers of patina uh off it, they they that's wonderful because uh, what I often find with reducing the the, the forces, <clears throat> forgive me, um, is that um, it it brings out more the magnificence of the composition. Uh, it, that that is not true for every uh, kind of uh, piece, but um, I find the B minor mass is one of those candidates, and certainly the Messiah, and both are very polyphonic. Um, and uh, in, in the case of the, the Messiah in particular, the role of the, the choir is so extraordinary um, for any kind of uh, even oratorios uh, uh, of, of any kind. And um, so um, I, I believe the, the, the balance and the, the uh, idea of blend and uh, um, uh, Yes, greatness, but but not just in sheer volume, but in in a relief and and three D and and uh, 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 sort of a more three hundred sixty degree kind of concept, if that makes sense. Um, uh, the, the, uh, yeah, I I, I I I think this will be very obvious um, with with those two bodies, you know, the uh, two the two bodies in town, the, the choir and the orchestra that are made for that piece <laughs> somehow. Yes, yes. Um, and that brings me to the fact that it is, is it is it your first Messiah collaboration between the, uh, between you two, between your two ensembles? It I is, believe. it is your it first is. one. So um, just a quick moment, like how, how do you share the preparation for something like this? I mean, for instance, how do you share maybe about the tempi, uh, how, do, how who, who decides what, how does that work? Maybe Kari, you can start. Yeah, well, the first step is that Alex is going to be the one making the big calls, right? Um, so I've already got a list of Tempe from Alex, which, you know, I'm not going to hold him to them. It's not like that, but it gives you the ballpark for which to prepare. And the choir meets a couple of times just to sing it through. Uh, most of the singers will have sung this, so it's not a question of learning the notes, but it's sort of... Um, just honing in a little bit on how we're going to phrase things, um, articulate things, and then get sort of the, 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 the fairly swift MP in, in the machine. Um, and then we meet with Alex a couple of times before we meet the orchestra. So the, basically the choir is, is then when the orchestra shows up, it should be so the choir knows exactly what it's doing. And for Alex, it's then sort of, getting the choir and the, uh, the orchestra to work together. Um, so that's how it goes step by step. And, and you have a big shift. You're usually, of course, the one who's standing in front of the choir. In this case, I hear that you might be in the choir singing. Yeah, well, I, I thought I'd sort of use this um, opportunity. <laughs> um, I hope I don't get kicked out during the, <laughs> during the process, but uh, um, it's going to be very sort of I... quiet. <laughs> I think that's no, wonderful. I'm really looking forward to it. 
Yeah, I think that's wonderful. And I'm sure that, I mean, it's just such a wonderful, uplifting piece, some of it that, I mean, everybody would want to be in that choir, myself included. Um, Jonathan, um, I'm just wondering whether after being part of the Messiah Complex, which was a very unique film. I don't know if people uh, listening saw it, but I'm sure some have, because it, it went viral, it was very, very popular. And um, it was a fantastic uh, film. It wasn't the whole Messiah, but a, but a film about mm -hmm. Messiah that really was pan-Canadian and um, very diverse and, and just a beautiful film. Um, has being part of that changed in any way, the way that you approach Messiah? What what was that experience like in terms of what, what you will bring now to the piece? Yeah, it, it has changed the way I, I think about the piece. Um, I think, I mean, I, I loved, I loved many aspects of it going into that project. Uh, I think the way there's always some maybe clumsiness with the English in Handel, um, but the rhetoric at the core of his sort of um, intentions, I think, is just so uh, powerful. And um, but I, I, I guess I came to the piece first as a voice student, and then. Um, and then touring it a lot with um, in the choir of Tan Kokman in of Amsterdam Baroque, and so we we did the piece a lot. And I, I maybe I had a little bit of Messiah fatigue by that point when we uh, started that project in 2020. Um, but yeah, I didn't know before that all of the sort of I guess peripheral pieces of cultural context that go into um, the continuum that is Messiah. And because it has uh, maintained such a um, an important place for community choirs, for church choirs, for professional ensembles. Um, and it was one of the vehicles for resurging a historical, historically informed performance. Um, uh, that community as well. So I, um, in Messiah Complex, uh, one of the things that I, I got to know about was that the first, um, the first uh, performance of it, certainly in Canada, or what's now known as Canada, it wasn't at the time, was, was um, in Inuktitut. Uh, so that was in the language of the Inuit people. And so it was used by um, uh, Moravian missionaries in Labrador and Newfoundland to indoctrinate um, uh, Inuit there. And so, I mean, that's sort of a dark side of it. But then since then, I mean, uh, another one of my friends and colleagues who was in Messiah Complex, Deantha Edmonds, who is Inuk, um, she she views this as an opportunity to reclaim uh, Messiah in a very positive and uh, faith uh focused way in her in her own way so I mean uh in a um just to say that Messiah Complex that project uh really helped me to look at a lot of the work um that I'm doing with uh in Baroque repertoires and to then see if there's an actual relationship with um colonialism on this continent um and then also uh yeah just to to sort of widen that uh that cultural context um and in in my performance so it, it it brings me something uh but that's also an interesting fact uh for people to know yes no you've just given us a very interesting lens that that i wasn't aware of so thank you so much for sharing that um uh the history of the messiah um has has many more tentacles than we than we even think um you brought up something both Alex and, and Jonathan about the choruses and I want to get back to the choruses which for me of course you know are very much in a way the driving force I mean a lot of the uplifting aspects of Messiah come from the choruses glory to God lift up your heads the hallelujah chorus the amen at the end you know there's so many moments uh 
that that the choir brings that even for unto us a child is born which i cannot listen to without smiling from ear to ear so kari what what yeah tell us something about about you know these incredible choruses in this piece yeah um i've had the fortune of um working on the on some of the other handel oratorios um to spring to mind when you say that the chorus, um, Jephthah and Israel in Egypt, where they're just as great. I mean, Israel in Egypt, probably even greater. They're just absolutely astounding. But the difference is that I think that, especially compared to Israel in Egypt, that the choruses and the solo bits and the orchestral bits form um, a much better balance in the Messiah, that they really feel balanced um so the voices are equally strong and um i think you know you, yes okay i don't want to sort of play down the chorus <laughs> because you know that's my thing but but i think you'd find that without some of the solos the choruses wouldn't have the same mm -hmm. same weight on this sort of that sort of pomposity <laughs> comes partially from the context that they're in um but that said you know that Handel was, he was as, as I said earlier, he's an he's an opera composer. He knows how to write for for voices, and they're just such a delight to sing. Um, some of them are, as everyone will know, very quick and and very florid. But whereas, if for example, um, the Bach um, Mass in B minor, some of those runs are practically ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't have those. They're very natural. You know, they they just demand a lot of skill and knowledge and so on, but they're a pleasure to sing. So I think that partially comes out in those choruses is that they're so well written for voices and they're so enjoyable to sing. And um, yeah, but yeah, I could list sort of 10 more to what you said and we'd all be, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they are, they are, they are the real thing. Yeah, they, they really are a joy. And and I mean, you know, you, you mentioned this sort of dexterity that is needed and the virtuosity, although it's not perhaps as instrumental as in the B minor mass, but the fact that the choir will be uh, smaller in numbers, I think 24, is that correct? Um, it just makes it a lot more nimble than some of these larger productions, which of course, you know, exchange uh, sound and, and and loudness perhaps but but the nimbleness i think in this piece and the the brilliance and the sort of um yeah fluidity uh, that these um, number small number of voices will bring will just be uh something that maybe people are not so used to hearing and especially with a professional choir like yours so mm -hmm. that's really something to look forward to yeah um, and, uh, and if i can just add to that is one thing i think you get i think which alex maybe referred to is this transparency Mm -hmm. Because you've got the polyphonic lines where the, the voices are doing different stuff. The clearer they paint the picture of what they're doing, the clearer you see the whole. So there's much less sort of maybe, you know, just sheer force, but there is this transparency that gives you a different kind of power. So it's it's sort of, you know, it's as you say, it's a trade-off, mm -hmm. but I'm sure it'll be sort of refreshing for many people who we're used to the bigger oratorio choir kind of yeah. performances. Yeah, something to to try out for sure. Um, you know, um, you just mentioned uh, Jonathan a minute ago something about messiah fatigue, which which of course can can, can happen perhaps after doing many many uh, in a row. But I wanted to ask maybe maybe Alex can answer that. Um, how how does one deal with keeping things fresh with a piece like that? Like I know for myself, like if I you know, have that the score has been resting for like nine, 10 months, and then it's time to pick it up and get ready for another bout of messiahs. Um, you know, there's certain feelings that go with that, because of course, you're not the same person you were the year before. And I'm just wondering how, how do you keep it fresh? What, when you grab that score again, what's your process? Yeah, um, in the case of the Messiah, it's actually a, a long uh, story uh, of a journey and discovery for me, because uh, a little unlike in the Anglophone uh, world, I didn't grow up with that piece uh, as a part of an annual ritual. Uh, the, the, the piece uh, for that would for me have been the, the Christmas Oratorio 
or uh, the uh, Matthew or John Passion by Bach. And yes, the Messiah was all, also done. I discovered it rather <clears throat> as an older teenager. Um, and then uh, I uh, played it as a continual player for, I don't know, probably two decades. I, I don't know, before I conducted it for the first time. And um, uh, now more conducted it, but uh, it, I, I have to say it's uh, it's it's always changing for me. So it it doesn't it al almost doesn't feel like returning to something. Mm -hmm. And whenever I'm, I have time to actually really spend time with the score again, I'm grateful. And uh, uh, you, you sometimes find that with great pieces of art right paintings that you look at and they seem like a new piece or a, a movie that had you seen a dozen times that you are not getting tired of, of, of seeing again and um to the other question which is the um more physical of of doing the the piece in the moment which is a little a little more of a, 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 a topic perhaps for us as we do no cuts of it so we do really the piece in its entirety which which adds another perhaps 10 or 15 minutes to what you may find somewhere else not a huge percentage actually but still, it needs the breath for, for the soloists. They need the, the stamina for, on the choir side. It's, it's, um, that um, is something that was harder for me when I was a little younger. Uh, so playing it as a continual player in performances, uh, I probably I didn't take a look at my watch, but I, I may have felt tempted. And that's something that, uh, I, and I'm super grateful for that, uh, happens less and less. Uh, for me and and you do insist on doing the entire messiah without cuts uh, i've i've read that uh, you you wrote that somewhere um and why because um and that goes back to what carrie earlier said uh, uh, handel is such a such a skilled opera composer he is such a skilled composer in anything and he uses in the messiah even material from his um, uh, earlier steps as a composer, his Italian years, uh, chamber duets uh, with uh, uh, quite uh, secular uh, text, um, um, precisely for the piece, ba, bim, bam, ba, bam, bam, right? That makes us smile, and um, um, it it's. Uh, I, I think he um, he scoops from 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 the the uh, the the accumulated uh, source of his um, uh, uh, skills to 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 fill that piece with with everything he can give and um, therefore uh, I think following his uh, um, intuition there his um, his sense of uh, how to balance it it feel it feels perfectly right it it really doesn't feel uh, uh, boring at all I find it's it's just balanced so well that uh, it could go on for another hour. It's it's one of those things that you could watch, and and if there's a cliffhanger, and you decide, okay, no more episode today. It's it's difficult. <laughs> Take that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I mean, I also with your tempi, it doesn't just want to reassure people that it's not hugely long anyway, because some of them skip quite well. But uh, I think that there's a, a letter somewhere uh, from the librettist Charles Jennings that that says. I really hope that Handel will give his all to this text, and and he certainly did, and he wrote it in record time. I think it was like really, really fast. I can't remember if it was a few weeks or something, but unbelievably quick uh, time of of um, inspiration and and creation, really. So I I feel like um, maybe we we've said plenty of beautiful things to make people want to come and hear the Messiah and to hear Jonathan Adams uh, as soloist and, and Alex and the uh, Pacific Baroque Orchestra and the Vancouver Chamber Choir uh, do this wonderful piece uh, for us. Uh, really can't wait for this myself. I want to thank you all for chatting with me today. Um, of course, there's three other soloists that we didn't have today, but that uh, we will meet on the stage. Um, Nicholas Scott, tenor, Alison McCarty, alto, and Sherazad Pantaki, soprano. December 8th performance uh, at the Orpheum. If you want tickets, you can find them on our website, which is earlymusic.bc.ca. 
or if you want to go to the K-Meek Arts Center on December 7th, you can buy your tickets at kmeek.com. Uh, I just want to say we have tickets for as little as $20. Um, really, anyone can afford to come. Uh, if you're 35 and under, you get a 35% discount, which means that there's tickets from $28 only. So uh, I hope that you'll feel welcomed to uh, this exceptional concert. It's a good way to prepare for the festivities that are coming. It's a very relevant piece for our troubled times because, as we said, it's profound while being entertaining. So please join us. It'll put a smile on your face. I look forward to seeing you there and also to seeing you at our next episode of Intimate Conversations. Thank you so much, Alex, Kari, and Jonathan for joining, joining me today. Oh.